because I'm just like Jerry uh, uh, start thought that I will start the these um, opening remarks, and later that Dr. Raymond and Jerry will provide detailed introduction some uh, some our their topics and some introduce some tools that uh, in our platforms. So um, I, these few days I'm just thinking that uh, maybe I still need to pick a, a suitable topics for this opening remarks because I feel that not much people <laughs> know the, about uh, National Gym Bank, the China National Gym Bank. And, and I, maybe I, I still need to pick a topics. So I choose that the bio data and AI as a topics for my slides. And as everyone knows that the AI technology has made a significant breakthrough in recent years, and especially the uh, from last year, the large language model technologies and has created a um, uh, tremendous value uh, uh, for many uh, some uh, for industry and the life science. And and right now that uh, also the importance in AI in um, life science is. Um, Increasingly evident, and it, with with a potential application such as um, prediction the pro, uh, protein structures, and uh, assistant the daughters the diagnosis. So um so at begin beginning I will still bring some uh introduction about the China National Gym Gym Bank and brief is is playing his history. Um, we start the uh, National Gym Bank is uh, started from um, 2011 and we get the funding and approved by the Chinese government. And Lao Chi, uh, we started providing our service uh, in 2016, September, and we we have a principal um, uh, uh, maybe our core principle is owned by all, complete by all, and shared by all. And it is the first comprehensive um, gym bank in China. We um, do, our main work is to bring the effective bioresources, conservations, and digitalizations, and utilizations. So um, I think that uh, we have a, what, what, what we have in National Gym Bank, we have a, bio repository we store the samples voters we have a we call the digitalization platforms with uh, many sequence machines and we have a a bio informatics data centers okay so i bring some um detailed introduction about the three departments of the these three functions or main, main, main functions of National Gym Bank. The first one is we develop an um, automated and course effective, we call a high throughput bio repository. I uh, bring some pictures and some details. And um, we have a comprehensive bio repository. We can right now we can store the tens of millions of samples and we can automate it, high throughput and course effective it and covered from not just human beings samples we cover the plants animals and micro wells and we have a informatics management we develop many systems to manage our samples we have a whole process and and samples and management systems and cover the from the sample collections and transportations and pre cross-sections and sharing or in other applications. This is the bio repository. And we also have a, a digitalized biodiversity conservation base um, like a, a bio, biological resources center. And we integrate on genetic resource and also the bioinformations. Um, here it is, it is a uh, open platform. So conserves and digitalize the living bar resources. And we also have collaborations with many botanical gardens in China. 
uh, like the Jelly Botanical Garden. We have a we call it digitalization platforms, and it is a leading reading. We call it is a reading platform. Uh, we can right now we can producing um produce petabytes of data annually. We have petabytes, uh, annual output capability. Uh, annual processing capable is um more than five hundred samples. And we have a is a highly automated. All of the process and the library preparations of the data output is um made by the machines. And we also have a secure database and highly effective bioinformatics analysis platforms, the data center, high performance computing. Well, right now our store. Capability is about 60 petabytes. And the second stage of the National Gene Bank will about, about uh, 200 petabytes. And we also do some more work on secure and state stabilities. So um, we are not just um, uh, the platforms we not just the providing the the machines or the high efficient machines or high throughput machines. We also have a collaboration, uh, just like the network, the collaborations and the resources. This is in China that we uh, not just in um uh, the resources about the uh, human beings also cover the plants, animals, and the microbiomes. You can sort saw the pictures and dip the distributions in different resources what we collaborated with. And not, not only in China, we have a collaborations around the world, uh, like the GBN Espers and the Wageningen Universities. Because um uh, we also have a we right now we have uh, stored many um vultures and only see the resources. Uh, from other countries. So this is the picture of China National Gym Bank. <laughs> I hope that uh, everyone who joins the, the seminar, the workshop today, have a, some some days, maybe have an opportunity to come to China at Shenzhen and so then walk around. And I can show you, this is the real pictures, <laughs> the real one. So um, we're just talking about that we have um, um, several platforms, the biorepository, the digitalization platforms with many sequencing machines. And we have a, a data center with, uh, right now is about six peta, 60 petabytes stored capabilities. But we are, after we start the starting, Pro starting providing the service at uh, 2060s, we are we are thinking about another things because we have stored uh, the vulture species, the seeds, or uh, leaves materials from some gut or we collaborated like about we taught the gardens and we we um, extract the DNA from the samples. We have a sequencing machines to do some. Um, like the whole genome sequencing and transcription um, exome sequencing. So we get the data from the pilots and we store the data in our data centers and we have uh, some um, standardized analysis pilots. But still uh, need, uh, another thing that we need to do is that uh, the National Gene Bank is not just the uh, machines. <laughs> Or just we what we need to do, what we can do is just to store the samples of store the, the the data. There is a I just put some five key, four four keywords that uh, right now is a very famous. The first one is findable, yeah, right? The accessible, interoperable, and reasonable is a very easy to understand. But but at 2017, 2017 all the thing is. Just um, just a beginning. 
So if we want to put all of the information we get for one life's life and the information, the metadata we get from the, the cells and the, the limb systems or the, the data we store in our high performance computing or high performance store system. We need to link many systems. The first one is the project management systems, sample checking uh, managing systems, the lab uh, management systems, the data management, and the list is pipelines and applica application service. So how how can how how, how what, what kind of things we need to do to link them together? So I, at the times we think we need to develop a platforms that to facilitate the resources sharing. So um this is the platform we we have right now. We call the China National Gym Bank database. It's a unified platforms and from and provide many data service. And the the his his link is um db.cngb.org. If everyone join the meeting, you can try to access these websites. db.cngb.org. Okay, I will move more quick and, and put the more details to other colleagues. And, and this one is the, the draft designs I made five years ago. So you compare the, these two things, they, right? Is a, is a lot of work to do. But at the beginning, we have only have uh, nine, eight or nine people in our teams. And right now we have the uh, more than 20 people in to develop and maintain these platforms. So um, the first things that we begin to develop the platforms, we I think that uh, the most important one is uh, the the structure of the 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 data, because at the times in BGI or in National Gene Bank, we did not have a data warehouse and did not have any standard to how to store all this data. So I I think that what we got to do in the future, what we need to do is is not just develop a, a, a schema for our own. We still need to connect with other database and share the data or the information with them. So the cost structure of the data schema is based on ISDC, like the NCBI and NBI, what they made. And, and we also combined some, um, some uh, uh, keywords, some schemas from uh, GGBN and GA4TH. And we also have a collaboration with the data science and make sure that the data set we, we curated is um, associated with a DOIs. So after we um, uh, designed our uh, basic structure of the data schemas, we, um, the first core system we developed, we called CNGB sequence archive. Because at that time, uh, because we, uh, um, a national um, data center, we still need to, um, uh, our roles in it is to uh, archive the, 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 the data in China. So right now I think it, it can be the largest global archives of raw data sequenced by the sequen the, 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 the sequence machines. Because right now we have stored um, more than 5,000 projects, about um, 12 petabytes. It covered about um, 480 institutions and covered more than 1,000 articles and journals and recommended by the 20, 21 international press and journals. So once we... Um, we are uh, developed the data archive system. We begin to, to what we need to think is that we not because in National Gene Bank we not just store the data, also the samples. So we developed two main system. The first one is called EB the eBell Bank, and the second one is the BRC systems. 
to share the biological resource uh, for the plants, animals, and my, the microorganisms. Right now, what the samples of what we shared is uh, more than 600 samples uh, from animals, plants, microorganisms, and, and human beings. And then animals, we right now, have, what we can share is more than 1,000 cell lines for uh, uh, 38 animal species and also the plants and organisms. So after we have uh, have many information that we get from um, the other institutions and researchers, we, I, we, we think that um, before we started our projects, there are already many databases in the world, many tools. I think that we still need to develop a search engine for the China researchers to link different databases in one engine. So we, at the time that we try to link many metadata from the uh, SBI, then EBI, DDBJs, and other databases, so right now we in this search engine, we index six more than six billion uh, metadata, and the, the the and the data metadata files we store is a uh, more than ten terabytes, and also we we also use Neo4j to develop a uh, knowledge graph, it's a uh, more than six billion symbols. I think data because in China we um. We still need a lot of work to do in scientific data management. So I think it's a, a great search engine is, a, is a needed for many researchers to let them quickly get access to the data set in the world. So after we have a, a developed archive system and we um, the, the, and the search engines, I, we are thinking that because in, we want to make the data in our system can be quickly to share the, but the many people in China that it's very hard to quick let them quickly download the data because they have no have, did not have many do not have many stored uh, 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 capability in their data center. So we start to develop a, a system we call Coprot, and there is a. a Introduction in this uh, screenshot is automatic by informatic analysis without the program background. So the first thing we got to do is the streamline the batch analysis. We, we basis a standardized uh, WDL language, and you can customize the the, the parameters, and it, you can. You can cut also you can customize the analysis with the notebook. We integrate the Jupyter notebook in our systems. You can you can use your, your own language, the Python, the R language, and other packages. So uh we have a at this time we have developed this uh, system about uh four years. We are thinking about at the time there. The, they also we also take uh, discuss the AI and also the take discuss the intelligence many years ago. So we have a we have a data files about the twelve petabytes. We have many um, information we integrate, and uh, we are thinking that what kinds of next steps we need to do in our platform or in our teams or in National Gym Bank because we do not have much people. Until now that we already are only more than 20 people. So we need to do what, what kind of things what we need to do. So what we're going to try the first things that is the, because in BGI we develop a, a spatial omics, a technology we call the Stereo seek. So we got to, we tried what, what we're thinking, what we thought in this database. 
Uh, right now is the I think it's one of the largest database in spatial transcriptions. And if, uh, about uh, we uh, the right now there is a more than one million requests in these systems. But most of the important things that we do the, for this system is we try to link the samples, the TCO sections, sequencing reads, and the gene expression data, and the cell spatial predictions and the cell annotations. We are basics of many uh, structural data schema we have in our systems, and we hope that everyone access these systems can get all of the data from the samples to the data set. So um, if we have many data, we still need to uh, develop tools to visualize the knowledge. So we develop uh, tools in spatial omics, we call it called a stereo map. It's an ultra high definition visualization software we, you can visualize the spatial omics data, and you, it um you can display in the over millions of cells with a high ultra high resolutions. So I think it um, the visualization tools can be a foundation for researchers to understand the 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 knowledge we get from the spatial types and notations and locations and development. Okay, not just the, the spatial uh, transcriptions. We also have a, uh, some projects about the single cells that a non-human primer cell atlas. We store the more than one million of cells, and we we can visual also we can you you can use the visualization tools to get the information and knowledge from the data. And I also take an example for biodiversity. It's about the latter database. We collaborate with the Wageningen University. And right now we have well, we have stored uh, more than four four hundred species in these systems. But the main things I got to share is that we have separated the system for Six uh, core structures. The first one is gene plasms, the genomes. And uh, th sorry, there is a mistake. <laughs> the variations, the phenotype, and the microbiomes, and all also the spatial omics. We think that the because in National Gene Bank, the main thing is that what we what we can do is the digital digitalize the data the samples and make transfer them to into the data. So all we all what we have done or what we had we got to do is to link them together. So I think it is um maybe is a new knowledge system or thoughts to digitalize the species the species from these uh six dimensions. <coughs> So let's go back to the to the stores. I we will bring that from the the data file information, the knowledge, to intelligence. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do. I put the pictures that created by Mid Journey, <laughs> with a a promos that cre some promos created by the chat GPTs and directly use the promos to create the picture through the mid journey. And the main, main keywords in the promos is the life science at digital speed. I think right now we really at a digital speed if we can use many thoughts, uh, many uh, ideas that we, we get from the AI technology. So uh, finally, I got to share that these the pictures Take by my friends, and it's the the take the at night. It's very beautiful. Every time I have a thought, uh, not even in in China or other uh, other workshop uh, abroad, 
I will share these pictures, they're very beautiful. But the ones I put as the, take the, this picture the, right, as the basic one and created by another <laughs> pictures by the mid-journey, by the AIs, is very, also very beautiful. So I think that uh, maybe I just uh, made a uh, opening remark and I not get the many, bring the many details and I hope that these um, slides can bring you some store, bring you some stories about all what we are going to, what we have done or we're going to do in the future of National Gym Bank. Thank you. Okay, so next that uh, I, I'm just share screen, so I'm not sure that any questions in the Discord. But the next, okay. I have one quick question, uh, and mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else has a question. I think a few people were mm -hmm. just saying. I think there were one there. questions in the Discord. Oh. Okay. So my question is, um, I know the CNGBDB has. So my question is, does CNGB have all the genome assemblies from all the INSDC uh, part partners. So does it index all of the other genome assemblies as well? That's yes, question. we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. question okay. two is: in addition, you have extra genome assemblies that are only in CNGB, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to, I mean, I know that you are talking with the other partners to get to share that data uh, eventually, but right now. If you want additional genome assemblies, you should look in CNGB as well, just in case there are some extra CN, uh, uh, genome assemblies over there. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I, can, I can answer these two questions. The first yeah. one is that we, Chris, we, I mentioned that we develop uh, search engines. So every, uh, every month, we will synchronize the metadata from the uh, SBI and index them. So, but the, we not index all of, them, all of the metadata from the SBI, so we just access part of them. And we not not stored all of the, the, the files because um, we, we, in our system, we also do not have the much stores, uh, uh, storage in our systems. So we just uh, a part of them, not all of them. But uh, the second one is that because in China many data genome data were submitted, uh, were submit to a uh, national gene bank, but some of them we will also uh, uh, transfer to a national uh, ISDC. But some of them they, because they depend on the nat uh, researchers. So some of them is only stored in our systems, but we, most of them is public. So I think that in the future is that if the, the GOAT or the EBP, the system want to link them, I think it's okay, yeah. Yeah, that, that was the main thing. So I think for people on this call, for example, if you are mm -hmm. interested in a species and normally you would look in NCBI, obviously you look for your species, you look for your genome. But I think mm -hmm. what uh, Xiaofeng is saying that you should also look in CNGB just in case there are extra genome assemblies that are available there. In the future, this will be synchronized. Hopefully, it'll all become all in one place, all easily accessible. But for now, you should go to CNGBDB and look for your species of interest because you might see additional data there. Yeah, yeah. So I think that the, the Sujay, your team's work is very great. You develop a, a, a search engine called Code. Because, uh, we, because uh, we taught with uh, Raymond last year, uh, from the first time I know the, what, what your team's doing, I think that uh, this search engine is very important because not just in, in, in National Gene Bank, not just in China, many, many genome data is stored in their old systems. Their old systems and, and, and very hard to, to sometimes some rare the species genome assembly cannot get as 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 directly or can, cannot be found in SDC. So I think the, your your search engine is very great and for the the biodiversity research in the future. Yeah. There's one more question. Uh, can we also get uh, by somebody in Discord? Can we also get different human genomic variants that are not in NCBI? 
Yeah, because I think that uh, human being data in China right now is that once you get, if you want to synchronize to SDC, you need to get the improvement by the department, by the, in the government. <coughs> so many times, most of the uh, China, the human genome data was stored in, in, the, in the Chinese database, like the National Gene Bank or the, the NGDC in, in Beijing. Right. The, the, there is a two main, uh, right now there is two main database in China. The first one is National Gene Bank. The second one is the, the, the one in Beijing, the maintained by the, the CAS. And right now, the most of the data is stored in this part, the, the human human beings data that the, the produced by the, the Chinese researchers. So, but some of them will still think to, um, as they say, but but not often. Not often. I, I think that most of the most of the 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 bar, the, the genome assembly, the uh, all the raw data, or the of the bio, biodiversity will also be submitted to as as NCBI or EBI. But uh, right now, the most of the human beings data is stored in China. Uh, well, I mentioned these two databases. Yeah. Can we get? Yeah, yeah. You, you right now we have a. You can get a, a different human genomes variants not reported in uh, uh, NCBI. Uh, we have a, a cohort we call the CKB, and it's more than I'm not sure the, how many people, but but it's more than ten about 1 million, so I'm not sure. But right now that we have a, we have got to develop an imputation service and, and we'll provide the service in National Gym Bank. So you can, uh, but, the, or, but in, in, in NCBI, I think that it has already stored many, <laughs> always stored many human genetic variants in, in around the world. But if you some, you will go to get some, um, data related to Chinese people, so you still need, sometimes, I'm not always, sometimes you still need to get access by the, some service developed by some uh, projects in China that the CKB projects and some projects by other teams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because right now we still need to, need, need to get the approval by the department in China government. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. But most of them, I I sure that most of them will public in China the human resource data. But we are sometimes we still need to find a way. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So we move to another topics. Okay, Raymond. Thank you. Yes. I, I stop the sharing. I just share my screen. Just give me one second. Could you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, I'm Raymond from the China National Gym Bank. Uh, I'm happy to have this opportunity to introduce our some database and platforms. Uh, and sorry, I think I need to turn off my camera because my computer is around seven or eight years old. It is quite old. And then so the internet signal is not that good. So I just turn off my camera to make this talk smooth. Yeah. Just give me one second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So be before I start, before I start this talk, uh, I will take some. I will spend a few minutes to explain why we build such a lot of platforms or database. Uh, as Vincent mentioned just now, we have built some, for example, the STDB for the spatial transomics, or the some mouse database for the mouse single cell, or some letter database for the letter genome and the variation informations. 
Uh, wait. As Winston mentioned just now, uh, CNSA, the China National Gene Bank Sequence Archive, it is the data archiving, preservation, and sharing platform of CNGB. And as of August 2023, there are around 12 PB, 12 PB, 12 PB of data uh, archiving and sharing in our platform. Uh, what this data means, the top uh, in general, one general pro the data amount of one general project is around a few hundred GB. In some case, for some large project, it is one TB or two or five TB, something like that. So, ten, so eleven thousand TBs data means there are around four or five thousands of projects. And then, as we have such lots of data, so one challenge for this is. Wait. Yeah. So one challenge of for us is how to better to improve the data we use and the data sharing. And then we have asked some data user, and then this is some difficult they got. Someone said it is difficult to download the large data set because some data because the data amount of some data set is around. It is around a few TB, and then if they download that, it will cost them maybe one or two weeks. And then sometimes even they spend one or two weeks to download those large data sets, they found the data quality of those data sets are quite low. That means they waste one or two weeks time to download those useless data. And then even they download the, data, the large data set and then find those data sets are in a high quality, but because the data amount is quite large, and then they don't have that powerful server or computer to successfully analyze it, those large data sets, large scale data sets. So what we are doing, we have two solutions to help people to better share and reuse the data. One is we build lots of specific database, as Winston mentioned before, the STDB or the mouse data or the monkey database or the native database. We manually curation the data and then provide the high quality data and the visualization of those data. And then the other one is we have a computation platform. That means if people is interested in some data, they don't need to download those data to their local device. They can directly analyze, analyze those data or not using our computational platform. I will give more details about this tool. And then uh, because of the tight limit today, uh, there are lots of database we construct in CNGB, but I I just introduced one database here in this talk, that is the ST database. Maybe some of you is not familiar with the spatial transomics. So I just give some background information of the spatial transomics. Spatial transomics is the care as method of the year by the general nature method in 2021. And then, uh, could you see my mouse? Yeah, cool. Yeah. And then in the normal book analysis, it is just like this juice, the milkshake. You don't know how many pieces, how many types of fruits in this milkshake, and then you don't know how many pieces of each fruit in it. So this is the fruit analysis. You just know the gene expression in one region, but you don't know how many cells or the gene is, oh, sorry. You don't know, but you don't know the gene expression of each cell. And then the other one, the single cell technology is better. You know how many times of food in this region and then how many pieces of food in here. That means you know the gene expression of each individual cell. But one drawback of the single cell technology is that you still do, do not know the location of each fruit. And then this one, the next figure, it is the spatial transomics technology. You, you are only can get the gene expression of each cell. For example, this strawberry is one cell, and then this blueberry is another cell, and then this stuff, uh, this kiwi is another shell. You know the gene expression of each cell. And then you also know the location of each cell. 
So that is the spatial transomics technology. And then this is the combination of this one popular spatial transomics technology. And then if we want to get a single cell resolution, the pod size must be small cell size. And then so far only the stereo-seq developed by the BGI research has this resolution. Uh, we all know the cell size is around three to 30 mi micrometers. And then the spot size of the stereo set is only 0 0.5 micrometers. That means, uh, okay, so let's give you a photo. And then in this photos, each this, each this thing is each cell. And then you can see this each smaller square is the spot size of the stereo seq. It's just 0 0.5 micrometer is quite is smaller than the whole cell. So in principle, we can know the expression level of each part of a cell. So, but how about the real? How about tissues? We can detect use the stereoseq this spatial transomics technologies. The chips of stereoseq can the the chip size of Stereo can be ranged from the 50 millimeters to around 180 centimeters. Uh, in other words, we can put the monkey, monkey semi brain sessions in these chips. That means we can directly sequence the monkey semi brains in one time to get all information of this monkey semi brain in one sequencing. So, this is some public. Some publication use the spatial chance or miss technology. For example, this mouse this is about the mouse organ genesis. It published as a cover paper in Shell in last year. And then this one is about the inject induced regeneration. And then it is the cover paper in science. And then this one is the cow paper in nature. Oh no, sorry. This one is not a cow paper. <laughs> this this one is about the tumor. Use the spatial transomics and technology to analyze the tumor. And then this was published in Nature. And then this cow paper is about the summer fish and Drosophila. It is the cow paper in the developmental shell. So, but there was some problem of the spatial transomics data. One is that the, the data is separated in the different database, for example, the NCBI, EBI, BBB drive. Uh, I'm sure not only the spatial transomics data, but also the other data, such as some genome, human genome variation data or some plants data, all the data are separated in different database. And then the other one for the other, the other problem of the spatial transomics data is that the data set is usually in a quite a large size. It is some it always in the TB level. And then uh, the most important thing is now we lay off the spatial transomics data archiving system. Now, if people publish the spatial transomics papers, they just uh, submit their data to something like NCBI or DBJ or something like that, just use the single cell standard, not the, because there are no the spatial transomics scan transomics data archiving standard, so they just can submit those data into a single cell stand standard. But one drawback is that in the single cell standard, they do not archive the spatial, the, the cell spatial, the cell, lo sorry, the cell location information. And then without the cell location, without the cell location information, the spatial transomics is not a spatial transomics. It is the, just the normal single cell sequencing. So people is hard to reanalyze or repeat this spatial transomics analysis without a cell location information. So to address this problem, we construct a database called a STDB, spatial transomics database. We manually collect around 200 data sets and then from all over the world, from the paper, from the different data, data deposit data repository such as NCBI, DVBJ, or EBI, or some website, for example, the 10S 
within genomics website and then now we got 218 data sets this is almost all the public spatial transomics data sets and then in this database we collect and then do the manual curation of this data set and then people can and then do the spatial transomics data exploration and uh, visualization and then we also collaborate with another team to build some customized connection. I will give more details of this point later. And then we also build a spatial transomics data archiving system. I think this is the, the only one spatial transomics data archiving system in the world now. And then this is the QR code. If you are interested in it, you can scan this QR code to log in this website to get more details. And then now uh, our this database, the SCBB database, is was official launch uh in October 2022 last year. And then so far we have got around more than 350,000 page views and then it, around 50,000 download times. There are around 100 TB data. 100 TB of the spatial transomic data have, have been downloaded in our, in our in this database. And then you can see this map. This is a, some major user in the world. For example, we got some major user from the Europe and then from the Beijing, from the Shenzhen, from the, uh, sorry, from the Korea and from Japan, from Australia and from the USA. Also, we have lots of other users come from all over the world, but in this page, we just show the top seven users. And then I'll talk about the structure of our database. First, we just collect data, as I mentioned before. We collect data from the public domain, such as the public uh, NCBI, EBI, some data database and then we also get the data from our submission system as i mentioned before we have our own spatial trans omics submission system and then we deliver some tools for the data visualization data set combination and gene search and some analysis and finally users users can do some data exploration online analysis or the data archive data downloads in our database sorry and then uh, so far we have collected 218 data sets from the NCBI, DBJ, and from the paper, from the publications, from the manuscripts, and then some is from the direct trace submission. And then in this two, around 200 data sets, most of them are from the human. And then the second top species is the mouse, and some of them are from the some are fish, chicken, epidosis, and others. For example, the monkey or other things. And then we manually create those data sets and uh, display the general information of each data set. For example, the summary or we decide, uh, I will give you more details later about this part. So next, I will talk about something about our data archiving system. Uh, we design our data archiving system. This is the first specific spatial transomics data archiving system in the world. Uh, as I mentioned before, before this system, there were no, no data, no, no spatial transomics data archive standard. And then when we analyze the public data, we found many researchers haven't uploaded the cell spatial locations. Without the spatial information, it is hard to analyze the spatial transomics data. And for our understanding, that there was another important information need to be archived. The first is the biosample, and then the image, the biosample, the SNI image. And then sometimes researchers can identify new cell types according to the sequence result and the sample image. Next is the raw sequencing data and the expression matrix and the uh, cell spatial location. And sometimes it's the cell annotation. The cell annotation is quite important. And then we found that lots of, lots of data deposit 
to another database, for example, NCBI or EBI without this cell annotation. So if another researcher want to directly use the spatial transomic data, the cell annotation is necessary. For example, if I am interested in the SOS gene, uh, just one gene, and after the after analyze the spatial transomics data, I found this entry gene has high expression in a region of cells, for example, this yellow point, but without a cell annotation, I don't know what kind of cell they are. The bone cell, the blood cell, or another, I don't know. So the cell annotation is important for we use the, this data. And then this, and then this, Next figures are the screenshot of our data archiving system. And then the right figures show the process of our data archive system in general. The submitter need to create a project first and submit the sample information and then submit the tissue information. The tissue design, as I mentioned before, is the image of the tissue. And then the raw, sequ the raw sequencing data, for example, the FASTQ data, and then the an analyzed results, for example, the gene metric or the cell annotation and others. And then <laughs> after submission, we will perform the auto and manual data curation. If some researcher want to publicize their data, the data will be published after the curation. If some researchers do not want to publicize their data immediately, because the manuscript are still under reviewing or for other reason, they can set a release date for their data set. When the release date is reached, the data set will be published. And then I will talk about our uh, the visualization system. And then I found, I just directly show you the visualization system in the website. Uh, could you see the website now? Okay, cool, yeah. And then this is our website, the website of the CNGB. Uh, if people want to archive some the DNA data or the assembly data or the raw sequencing data, for example, the FASTQ or some variation data, they can use the CNSA here, here. And then this is the different around 30, uh, I think it's more than 30, the scientific database we construct. We have the plant database, for example, the 1K, 1KP, it includes around 1,000, oh, sorry, the name is 1KP, but now we are still developing this database. So the uh, content I find is a few hundred plants. Genome in this database is not one, is that 1,000? And then we have some database about the animal, for example, the bird genome and the fish genome or the insert genome. And then we have some database for the microorganism virus and the humans. And then, for example, the Netflix data we mentioned, if you want to visit the Netflix database, you can select the Netflix database here. This database, uh, Winston has, give, has given an introduction of this database. Before this database contains around 2,500 different letters samples, and then also they are covered respondent genome and the uh, variation information. If you want to do some analysis about the uh, netis, you can go to this database and then uh, browse and then uh, download some data. And then if you, and then the STDB is I want to introduce now, you click here. And then this is the homepage of the ST database. And then if, for example, if I want, uh, if I am interested in some mouse data, I can just type mouse here in this search bar and then click search. And then you will show, oh, now in this, in our database, there are 74 data set related to the mouse. And then instead of directory search, you can also go to our data set module and then select a different species. There are Eight, uh, 17 species, 18 species in our database or select the different tissues. For example, if I'm interested in kidney, I can select kidney and then you will show oh, there are 11 data sets are related to the kidney. And then let's go to the mouse here. The most data set and then this data 
uh, was published in the shell as the cover paper, as I mentioned just now. And then so in this data set, we have a summary, a short summary to describe this data, what it is, and then what type or what research area it is, and some which type they use now in this data, they use the stereo seek, and then which platform they sequence, and then which species it is about, and then which tissues they got. And then if you want to download the data of this data, you can also click this data button. And then here, for example, if I'm interested in the original gene is, oh, sorry, this is the barcode. If I'm interested in the NS data, we can do the ST, STOMIS, then, then there are lots of analysis result here. If I want to download some tissues image, and then you can click the image, and then there are images to download. And then here, if you, here is our visualization system. We can select the different samples of this data set. For example, if uh, we select uh, this E16.5 E16 sample, that means the day 16 of the mouse. You can see this is the, if you can zoom in and then each this small, small dot is one spot. And then you can see this is different time per cell. For example, if we want to keep this, if we want to see the brain cell, brain cell here is the brain cell. We can also change the color of this brain cell. And then <coughs> if we can also look at the individual gene here. For example, if we are interested in SOS gene here, the top SOS gene, you can see the expression level of this gene in this mouse tissue. The, the darker red means they have a higher expression. And then if you don't like the, this heat map color bar, you can change it to the blue or change it to another color as you like. And then if you find the spot is so small, you can also make it larger by changing the marker size, for example, we can change it to the 200. It is about larger now, and then we can choose it in the 500. Oh, it's better now. And then we go back to the default size. And then we can also check the gene expression of another genes. For example, this, uh, I don't know what this gene is, it's another genes. And then in our visualization system, we also provide another function to do the gene differential differential gene expression analysis. For example, if we will the heat map, it will show the gene combination between these two genes we select just now, and then this is the mean expression in the different shell type. If you don't like the heat map proc, you can choose this. It is in a dot proc or the in a one line proc. And also, you if you are a friend of the dark model, you can change it to the dark model. And then this is the visualization system of our database. We do this visualization for each of the data set, for example. Now we got the 200 data sets and then we do the visualization for each of them. And then we also collaborate with other researchers to create some specific database to support their data publication. For example, now we collaborate with six, six different teams for example, this uh, monkey, this one, I think this one was published in the Nature or Nature Communication, I forgot. And this one is the Drosophila published in the Developmental Cell. And then this one is the Jamba Fish also published in the Developmental Cell. And then this one published in the Science. And then this one published in the Shell. And this one is also published in the different Developmental Shell. And then, so what this, collection content. Each collection contain a homepage. This homepage can be designed for the researchers by them. This homepage just has a photo and have a title and have some description about their project. 
and also how to sign that paper. And then we also have some specific function. We collaborate with the researchers to develop some specific visualization tools to let other people better understand the work. For example, this, this, uh, space, this Gisofila data set is related to the 3D. And then so we develop this 3D tools with the researcher team. You can see, uh, For example, we just choose one. Hmm? Oh, sorry. I'm not quite sure how to use this one. So I just keep it. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> because this system is not developed by me, it's developed by our colleague. And then people also can download some data from this collection. And then we have another function for this spatial transformist startup base. For example, we have the gene search function. In this function, people can select the species and gene to show the spatial map of co corresponding gene in different data set session. For example, we can choose, for example, we can choose the mice gene and then we can select the tissue for example, we can select the brain and then we can type the gene, type any other of gene, such as them. And then we also can run the model to see the result. Sorry. You can see if I choose the mouse and then choose the brain tissue, and then this one will show, will search our the whole database and then show all the show all the brain tissue and then show the show this gene's expression in all the brain tissue. For example, this is some result, and then if you are, you are interested in this one, you can click here to get more details. And then we also have another function. For example, in this function, people can analyze two different data sets just in one screen. For example, I want to compare the, the some gene expression on the 12 days mouse and uh, some gene expression on the 60 days mouse. I can select E16 and uh, in this session, and then I select the uh, E12 in this session, and then you can see this one is the cell type of the E12, and then this one is the cell type of E16, and then we can, if we are interested in one gene, we can just confirm. So in this function, we can, e quite easy and efficient to compare the gene expression in the different data set or in different stage in the same data set. And then, sorry, I think a bit no, my computer is quite old. And then this one, this stable map is a, visualization tools specifically designed for the stereocyte data. If you are interested in the stereocyte data, you can use this software to analyze your data. So let's go back to the slide. So if you want to know more information about the spatial transformation database, you can scan this QR code to get more information. So we go back to the, so we go next, the code plot. Uh, code plot is a computation platform which allow users to run the bioinformatics analysis without the coding background or analyzing the large data set directly online without downloading to the local device. 
as I mentioned before. And then uh, this is the main page of the code plot. And then the function of code plot is simple. It consists of the data set and pipeline. Uh, after you select the data set, you have the two options. One is using the zero coding pipeline written in the workflow description language to analyze your data set. I will give more details later. And then the other is using the low code, low code pipeline, which allow user to perform the personalized analysis using the low or Jupyter. And then there were, we have preset some pipeline in the code plot computational platform. For example, we manually create 21 data sets. It includes the ensemble plant data set, including 96 ensemble plant genome, or we also develop a COVID-19 data set. It contains around 10 millions of different COVID-19 seeds or the single cell data set, it contains 21 species. Or user can also upload their own data set to this corporate platform to analysis. And then we are also trying to transform all the CNSA data, which is around 12 PB to this corporate. What this means, that means uh, if we complete the transfer, the data transfer, people can directly analysis the CNSA data without download, download those data to their computer using our platform. And then I just talked about the WDL, the workflow, the zero coding method first. And then the WDL, and then now we have around 30 WDLs. For example, some is the spatial trans or miss analysis pipeline, the single cell analysis pipeline, or some GWAS pipeline, or genome annotation, or genome assembly pipelines. All of them are preset. And then people can also upload their cell defined WDL pipeline. But how to use this pipeline first? They need to select which WDL or which pipeline they want to use. And then they can select a data set. As I mentioned before, that so far there are around 20. 20 data sets people can select, and then people can also upload their own data set to this Copro platform to one. After they select the WDL and the data set, finally, they just can hit the enter and then wait for maybe a few minutes, in some case, a few hours, and then they can directly get the results. In this case, people do not need to have any coding background. For example, they don't need to know how to write the Python or how to write the R or Pro. And then without any coding background, they can still run the bioinformatics analysis using our platform. And then the other way is the the other way is the no, no coding pilot way. We provide a Jupyter notebook to do that. Uh, in the past, programmer will have to write an entire program and then run it before knowing whether or not this program actually work. But now we can use the Jupyter Notebook to give user the option to run a session of code without running the entire programs. Uh, maybe I'll just directly show you online to give you a better idea. We just go to the CNGPDB, our homepage, and then we can click here is the code plot. This is a code plot, and in general, if you first time use the code plot, you need to log in, but I've already logged in and then start. And then go to the workplace. So give me one second. And then for example, and then start a load book. What? <laughs> okay. Sorry, maybe there was some problem. I have one hour of my time. <laughs> I have one hour of my analysis time uh, because Maybe you just skip this part. I give you another information because uh, this one we use the cow 
resource. So uh, everyone has the limited com computational hours each month. In general, everyone has 20 hour free computational hours per month. And then, so in this case, I have one hour of my time. So if I want to continue to use Copos, I need to recharge. But uh, maybe now is not a better time to just recharge it. So, uh, sorry, there are some problem to show how to use the code plot. But uh, I think this is the end of my talk. Thanks, everyone. So, do I have any questions? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> sorry, I have a question which I'm just going to read out because I just typed it. So code plot looks amazing. I also wrote that Stomix. Sorry, DPG. I just turned on my voice. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So uh, first of all, fabulous visualizations and presentations. I'm 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 an I'm not a great programmer, but I can appreciate fabulous programming and you know interface design and stuff. So that's great. So code plot looks amazing. Um. If you you said you might have to recharge it after the free hours, how do you recharge it with a credit card or with something else? Or that is a quick quick questions. Uh, actually, to be honest, this the recharge function is not open yet because ah, okay. this, yeah, this copa is still in the alpha or beta version. Yeah. Okay. So it is. So in general, everyone use this copa now is free. Right. Because we are still developing it, it, so we don't think it's a good time to just charge some people's money to let them to use this platform. Right. But after we finalize this platform or we just make this platform better, have a better interaction of a better function or more function, for example, as I said, after we transferred all the CNSA data, the 12 PP data to this code port, and people can directly and I as the data in the same say without downloading, and yeah. then maybe after that time we will open we will open the charge option and then provide some payment method. Okay. Um so and the other question was, yeah, sorry. Free. <laughs> yeah, right now it's free. That's good. So right now, if anybody wants to try it, they can. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. They I think they can try just go to uh maybe I just share uh, yeah, the issue? link is there. He's put the link in Discord. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I'm not quite sure it's still, sh still sharing my screen, but you can scan this QR code. Yeah. Or maybe just double and I've put it in the I've put it in the chat as well. Okay, cool. Many thanks. So the other question was you said you're using WDL, which is workflow description language. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know a lot of people are using Nextflow or other pipelines. So yeah, yeah. Is it easy to convert between one and another? I don't know. I have never I used think it. It's quite easy because uh uh to be honest, I'm I was using the Snake Make is another yeah. description language, but I changed it to the WDL, maybe just spend me maybe one or two days to learn how to use it. It's quite similar, I think. Okay. Lots of these uh, workflow language are quite similar to each other. And then this one, the WDL language is based on the Python. Uh, but unfortunately, if you want to write down a uh, personal WDL or personal, the pers personal workflow description language by yourself, you need to know the coding. Yeah, <laughs> no, but if you want to reuse you... somebody else's, then yeah, you don't Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you're right. If you want to use, you don't need the coding. But if you want to why your own WDL, unfortunately, you need to know how to use a Python or how to use another computer language. Thanks. Yeah. Any more questions in Discord? Or if you have, if you're not on Discord, you just want to raise your hand and ask a question, you can do that too. Okay. If not, we'll move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, Jerry Wang, we introduced something about the uh, commutative genome analysis, how to do the commutative the genome analysis. So, Jerry Wang, our. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, okay, okay, you start. I mute myself.
Okay, so now it's my turn. So you can turn off your voice. Okay, now I will share my uh share my uh share my screen and this is this one. Just wait a second. Oops. Uh, just wait a minute. I have to open the session. And so, so I can share my screen. Okay. Can everyone can see my view? It looks good, thanks. Okay. Okay, perfect. So the Vincent and the Raymond have introduced uh, something about the CNGPDB and the data sets. So uh, when we have uh, have a, volume, a large volume of data, what things we will do the next is the things we have to uh, take consider it. So when we have many uh, genome data, the most important thing for us to, to compare them and to uh, try to find some scientific findings through our scientist world. So my topic today is about raising the comparative uh, genome research ideas in the big data era. Okay, so the first thing uh, is what is the compare? So uh, from the Cambridge Dictionary, the compare uh, it declined that is uh, to examine or look for the difference between two or more things. So when you want to do the things we call compare, we have to know what things, uh, what is the stuff we want to compare for. So be before we do the compare, the first thing is that we should have a group of targets and the target has some similarity, such as the, they are all uh, such as the population, they are all come from the single species because in the biodiversity uh, biodiversity areas, uh, when we talk about the species, uh, it may have the, some similar morphology trait and there are differences uh, different uh, from the other species. So uh, maybe we can compare uh, the different populations within a species or we compare different individuals within a given populations, or we compare different species within a family or a given group. So the, uh, we, we, we talk about uh, uh, when we want to find some, uh, to do some analysis about some taxonomy. So we want to know the phylogenetic relationship for a given taxas. Uh, the things uh, we want, we should know so, so we have to prepare and obtain some sequence from the, uh, from the, uh, the given species. So uh, before the genome errors, the things we should do, we can do is we use some uh, techniques such as the PCR to amplify the sequence we need it and use the single, uh, single sequencing to obtain the sequences. And we use some, uh, some tools to construct the phylogenetic trees. And if we want to know the function of a genes or to know the evolutionary the history of a genes or a repeat element within a genomes, uh, and the things we should do is also to do the PCR. So when we go uh, when we go to the uh, big data arrows, uh, we can use the next uh, generation sequencing techniques and also some long range techniques such as the PEGBIOS or nanopause and to reconstruct a uh, high quality genome assemblies. And also we can also uh, use some uh, technology such as the high c or something like the genetic map to reconstruct a uh, chromosome levels genomes. So the uh, so based on the high level or the high quality uh, genomes, we can uh, use the annotations pipeline to do the uh, structure annotations. And we also can use the database such as the GLNKGG or the NRS from the CBI to do the annotation for them. So uh, based on this uh, annotation, we know the genes and the uh, repeat elements of a given species, and then we can sequence their transcriptome to know how their genes express in the given uh, stage or given uh, tissues. So 
uh, and then if we want to know more things about a uh, species, we can also obtain the different uh, samples from the populations and we obtain the relations. And uh, in these days, if we, we can, uh, we can also uh, in, in, uh, increasing our sequencing levels and we can also obtain the pan genomes of a given species such as uh, a good qualities for a uh, uh, for for a variation, so for a uh, specials we have five uh, respect of the uh, the data. The first one is the assembly, and the second is the annotation, and then the transcription to reflect the genes expression levels and also the variation and the pan genomes. So if we want to, uh, if we have many of the genome data, we can. Uh, have many box for the specials and each box including the five trait and uh, by comparing uh, the genomes or the comparing the block of the different specials we can uh, obtain some uh, new scientific findings so by comparing the different traits, well, we can try to find something novel so we have to uh, 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 we have two direction. The first one is the the, the history of a given uh, group, uh, a given compare pad, and the other uh, that direction is the trait. So the things we can use to compare is we use the single genomes. So the single genomes was from a species, but maybe in some um, in some background it's it just uh, represent a, a given family such as I want to compare two family and find some molecular mechanism behind them. we use the specials to represent them or maybe if we want to uh, uh, compare uh, two population into different locations we also can use two single uh, in individuals from the different uh, population to to find the to fight differences. So uh, based on this compares, we have two direction. So the, uh, for, for example, in the, uh, the first one is the history, history including the taxonomy, because when we do the comparative uh, analyze, uh, genome analysis in uh, uh, biodiversity uh, areas, the first thing is to reconstruct the uh, phylogenetic trees. And based on the phylogenetic trees, well, we can do the taxonomy work because when we uh, find some species was located in a given uh, a given clad which is monophyletic, so we can group them into a genus or, or a section or something like that. And then, based on the phylogenetic trees, uh, we can use some analysis tools to 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 note uh, the the important events or the uh, important uh, tectonic or climate things uh, happened in the in the nude or in the lengths of the of the trees and it will uh, reflect the uh, the story of its diversification or the speciations and also if you find some specials located in the different clade of the the phylogenetic trees it may uh, may, may reflect that uh, may may happen the convergence evolutions so in the right side, when we want to know uh, some uh, molecular uh, mechanisms behind the specials, uh, we want to know the, the uh, something involved in the trait, su such as the, the color of the flowers or how they are uh, uh, affected, uh, the environment stress. So we have to, uh, we can compare the things is the philosoph uh, ph physiology, such as we have two specials, and they maybe uh, maybe they have different uh, abilities on the biosynthesis or different uh, efficiencies. So we compare uh, these two species. We can know uh, something behind them and what uh, lead the, the the differences of the pathway and how it affected their photosynthesis uh, pathways and such as. Uh, so uh, this trait. It's not just for fun, you know, because the the chase when it was uh, occurs uh, within the given species or given families, it, uh, it always was suffering from the nature selections, which is prepared for its adaptations in a given environment. 
So in this time, we can combine the history of the diversification and also the trade evolu evolution together to reconstruct a whole story for a uh, for given uh, taxas uh, uh, for the story uh, how this group of species survive in the earth and what is the trait they use and how is the molecular backgrounds define this trait. So there, 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 there are some examples such, such as the, the first one is the uh, these two species are both from the the asteraceous, but they have different, uh, totally different reproductive uh, system. The first one is the Cicasters, which is uh, uh, is uh, reproductive uh, sexually. The other one is the Kingdoniot, which is uh, reproduce uh, sexually. So they have op opposite uh, reproductive uh, system. So we have uh, we we can use the genomes of these two species to do the comparative analysis to know the, uh, the, the, the molecular backgrounds or the mechanisms to define this, uh, to define the reproduction uh, system. So in the, in the right side is the, is the, is the uh, examples for the orchid. So this one is the apostasia, which, which is uh, lost the uh, specific uh, flower segment we call lip in the flower structure and the right side is the phapnopsis and we always put it in our house and which, uh, which we call the morse orchid right so when we compare this uh compare the genome of these two flowers uh, we can uh, know which genes uh, define the lip development so this one is also the other uh, example. There's also two, two different kinds of orchids, and one is the full microheterotrophic, and the other is the partial uh, microheterotrophic. So when we got the two genome, uh, when we got the genome of these two uh, plant species, we can compare them and to find the results uh, and to find the reasons behind them to define the uh, different uh, different habitat, and uh, and uh, and this example is also about a, a slight slight dog, and he uh, it's a historical dog, and uh, maybe I, I hear the story is this dog have saved a babies in the old days, so they they have uh, the sequence is genomes and compare it uh, with the other uh, slide dog in the local population so they will know some uh, some some molecular mechanisms to define the, the their colors or the or the layer of the codes or something so and what things uh, we can what things uh, we can do to conduct the comparative genome analysis. So the first thing is I mentioned beyond is we have, uh, before we start the analysis, the things we should do is to reconstruct the phylogenetic trees. So for the phylogenetic trees, we have different of the molecular markers because uh, now the genome uh, data can provide us millions of the uh, information sites. So we can choose the different kinds of the markers we use to reconstruct the phylogenetic relationship, such as the single copy genes, or we, we can also use some uh, SNP calling software to obtain the SNPs from different species. And also we can uh, uh, assemble their uh, uh, chloroplastic or the mitochondrial genomes and obtain the, the genes within them to, uh, and, and then, when we got these uh, molecular markers, we can do the different strategies to reconstruct the, the chase, such as we can uh, connect the gene together, such, such as to do the concatenated methods. And also we can uh, take in consideration many, uh, many species and we can use the some uh, software like the Astras to reconstruct the multi-species convalescence trees, uh, which will reflect it if there are, there, there are some hybridizations or integration uh, happens in a given uh, given clad. So 
also so we can uh, we can use the whole genome information to uh, to reconstruct the relationship such as we use the synthetic uh, block or the order of different uh, repeat elements or something like that uh, the right side is uh, examples that uh, it's the genome paper of the late cis qb but uh, if uh, if if you are doing the uh, plan research may, maybe you will know that the Magnolia, the clade is uh, is in congruence throughout the angiosperm sperms cheese. Uh, so if, if we you use the uh, different uh, different kinds of the phylogenetic reconstructive methods, we can obtain different results to compare them and to find uh, which uh, uh, which topologies will be preferred in this uh, genomic era. So the next things uh, based on the uh, phylogenetic trees, maybe we can do some uh, biogeographic work and to reconstruct the whole story when we obtain the calibrations like the fossil, uh, like the fossil points or the uh, tectonic or the climate events together. So for the uh, calibrations point, sometimes we can obtain some secondary uh, points for the uh, for the molecular clock estimations, and we can obtain the information from the time tree uh, website. And also we can uh, read some paper to to know the 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 historical events which is occurs in a given time, like for uh, for some clad diversity diversification or some uh, special uh, some uh, some unique special speciation so you you can uh, map the times onto your trees and you will find some uh, event so maybe in these times you can use some software to uh, to estimate it, the model clock such as beta at the SNC tree and also you can use the BAMM to to know the uh, evolutionary rate uh, transforms during uh, during a cheese, and you can also use the RSAP to know the ancestors uh, distributions for a uh, for a given group. You can note uh, su such as you can know uh, this this more uh, monophyletic clade. So it's uh, it's uh, ancestor was possibly located in uh, these three places. So after that, uh, we, we will try to explore some uh, traits within the genomes. The first things we could do is do the synthetic analysis. So when we have the uh, complete genomes, uh, especially for the uh, in the chromosomes levels, we can do the synthetic analysis. Uh, sorry, wait, wait a moment. <laughs> Okay, so when we do the uh, synthetic analysis, uh, we can use some software such as the NC Scan X and the MAMR, the last Z, and also we can use the cycles to uh, to pro the results. Uh, although sometimes the cycles, the the cycle, the, the result from the cycles will not give uh, many informations about the uh, synthetic, but but it will uh, do do help the people to understand if this assembly is uh, complete or not so the right side uh the right in the right side in the upper part uh it is uh, uh examples for the how the synthetic analysis facilitate the the the, the uh, facilitate the scientific funding so the uh collinearities analysis uh, of the p2 contain regions in the carrot this one the chromosome ones and and the uh, and set uh the uh, as the larger specials and the, the others was conducted and it shows uh the p2 the the genes related to p2 is lost in the asterasias so based on the synthetic uh analysis we we can find some uh some gene cluster or gene islands uh, which is important for a given uh, given biological process was lost in some genomes or some species or especially some families. So this is uh, good findings. And on the 
on the downside, this is uh, this is a result from the NC scan X. So based on this results, we can identify some whole genome duplication events because uh, when when some people want to uh, detect it, the uh, the, the whole genome duplications within a uh, given families because the du duplication event is uh, occur frequently uh, during the evolution of plant or animals. So some people will do the case distributions, but case uh, distribution is only one part of the evidence. So if we want to know the results, maybe we can use the synthetic, uh, synthetic evidence. So when we uh, conducted the synthetic analysis, the things we should notice the first thing uh the rearrangement if the re rearrangement between the different chromosomes will uh will will lead the the prison or the absence uh, of a given uh, sec uh, a given sequence which contain the important genes and then we would like to use the synthetic uh, block to identify the whole genome duplication and also, it's based on the many uh, genome, based on the many genome data that uh, assembled into the chromosome levels, uh, such as in a given families, we have five or, or five or six uh, cr uh, chromosomes levels assemblies. We can reconstruct it, their uh, chromosomes evolution uh, history. So this is an example. So the uh, the picture shows the reconstruction of the ancestor. Uh, chromosomes for the street uh, mud skippers, uh, the fish, and we can also connect it the structure change events with the historical events, such as the tectonic or the uh, climate respect, uh, if we, we have already done some biogeography analysis. So after that, uh, after that, the things we will focus on is the whole genome duplication, because we all know the whole genome duplication are uh, it will uh, double the, the the chromosomes and will give more resource for the specials or to uh, the or the individual videos to have more powerful to adapt the uh, environment. And when it uh, a genome was duplicated and it will uh, uh, go into the other process we call the diploid process. So in this process, it will uh, lose some genes and shape the chase of the species. So for the whole genome duplications, we have many ways to, uh, to, to identify the signals, such as we can use the WGDs, which can also contain the, the PNLs and the ad hours. And uh, both of them are uh, created uh, KS distributions and the uh, clear peak, which uh, will refers to a uh, 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 potentials, uh, whole genome duplication events. Okay, and also the other methods is the the NAPS. This method is just based on a given phylogenetic trees, and it will help you to identify uh, in which node or which clade uh, your uh, whole genome duplication occurred uh, possibility. So when you want to do the analysis, uh, use the NAPS, the uh, most important thing is you have to make your tricks more simple and you have to remove some, uh, some uh, redundant specials uh, to representing a given clad. So, so okay, so it's a, it's a large problem. So based on these two methods, we can identify the whole genome duplication events. But it, uh, but it is not the end, it just uh, begins. Because I have mentioned that the uh, diploid process is more important for specials to uh, adapt the environment after the whole genome duplication event. So when we uh, find where the duplication occurs, we have to know what the genes was retained. Because in, uh, especially in some uh, specials, which is located in a place that is uh, suffering the 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 the, the bio stress a uh, hard harder bio stress. It will uh, uh, pretend buyers to uh, retain more genes related to the stress response. So for this process, uh, we can use the the software to identify 
uh, to identify the genes which is retained in the whole genome duplication. And then based on the enrichment analysis, based on the uh, GL or KG database, we can obtain which, uh, which uh, process terms related uh, given by biological events. So, so we can have some scientific findings. So after that, we should do the gene family evolutions because when we got uh, several of the GLK genes, including the uh, uh, contain the many genes, we have to know what the genes are doing for. So the first thing is we have to do the uh, uh, the cluster uh, to do the cluster onto the uh, protein coding genes for the uh, for the compared uh, genomes. So we use the also founder or user uh, also NCL to do the clusterings, and we also use the cafe to to detect the potential expansion and contraction genes because the gene copy numbers sometimes uh, indeed uh, related to the trait of the uh, of the species. So we can also uh, through this trace we can also know the uh, in each node the. Uh, how how many uh, gene family is ex expensed, or how many gene family and contracted, or how uh, how many uh, genes are specific to a given clad or a given species, and then we do the enrichment analysis. We can have some terms. So these terms may be related to the common uh, common features for this uh, for this clade, such as uh, such as this this, this just like a, a sub subfamily. Okay, so when we got got the enrichment results of the genes, we can focus on the gene family that we really uh, focus on, so, such as the this example. This is the Milia azidarasa. Uh, if, if you know this species, it will have many secondary components derived from its uh, its stems, uh, from its stems. So the the researchers are focused on its. Uh, Limonoid uh, biosynthetic pathway. So the statistic, uh, it shows the statistic of the limonoid uh, biosynthesis related genes in in the genomes. The limonoid synthetic uh, pathway, which is divided into the NVI and also the NEP pathway. Okay, and the uh, cyclization stage and oxidative uh, modifications. So this result shows the tendon duplication of the terpenoid or stasis may be reasonable for the limonoid uh, biosynthesis in this uh, species. So we should focus on the uh, gene family we are interested in. So and then after the uh, gene family evolutions, if we find indeed some uh, some gene copy are uh, functioning for for some uh, some morphological um, some morphological traits, we can do the second two things. It's like this. The first one is we can do the function analysis to ensure if uh, these genes or these gene families indeed have that function on the things we are focused on, such as well, we can do some experiments and we can obtain their transcriptomes. And su such as if we uh, we talk about this uh, one matchbox genes, which is important in the develop of, of the uh, orchids flowers. So we have to make sure the, the, the transcriptome of the flowers have these strings and this string was expressed in a high level. So the other part is the functions, uh, is the function evolutions. Because in the first, first part I, I mentioned, uh, we do the transcriptome work to ensure if these strings are, are work in a given uh, species. And the other thing is we have to compare the genes uh, throughout our uh, trees, like for our families. So we will know the how this gene family or how this uh, uh, trait related genes involved. So uh, maybe based on this history, we can note how it affected the uh, evolutions or affected the uh, uh, adaptations for the given species. 
and we can uh, also to test some genes and some SNPs to find if they are suffer the uh, the potential integration events or to suffer some uh, nature selection events. So then we can connect it, this uh, these two parts together to reconstruct a whole uh, genome story. So. I have talked many things about how we do a comparative genome analysis in a, in a big data errors and what things uh, for the CNGBDB doing uh, in the future to facilitate the people, uh, facilitate the scientists to, uh, to mining the data and obtain some novel scientific findings. I have mentioned that for a uh, special, there is a, uh, is a block. This block contains five uh, respects of data like the genome assembly, the annotation, the transcript, the relation, and also the future coming pan genomes. So we have prepared this into a big, uh, block and for the several species and we contain the data base uh, we contain these data together to reconstruct the uh, new genome portals which is organization as the uh, as the uh, uh, organized I mentioned beyond so it will and then uh, based on the the potential scientific findings we uh, reconstruct the different data sets to con containing different species such as uh, if i want uh, if i want to uh, because when when we have many uh, or such as the Okay, genomes within the okay families. We have reconstruct. We, we can reconstruct the database for the uh, okay genomes together, and we prepare the uh, the data together. Uh, and the data set was put here, so every scientist can use this data sets to do their findings. Uh, throughout the uh the pipeline, I talk. Uh, I I mentioned beyond. So. Based on the data sets, the things we can do uh, more convenient is based on this data sets, we can do some uh, some prepare uh, some preparation work, like to reconstruct some uh, some secondary database, such as I can prepare the specific genes for uh, each uh, each genomes, and I I can also to pre we can also to prepare some uh, single copy. Uh, data sets for family or engine sperms or some some group so the scientist can uh, use this data uh, uh, directly to facilitate and shorten the times for them to find some new things uh, the other secondary uh, database including the k case matrix or something like the synthetic brook so we are doing now and I'm not sure the times we 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 publish this the, this website and the genome portals, but uh, indeed we are a try our best. Okay, so the Winston has talked about it. this is a AI error. So when we have many uh, uh many big data, what thing we should do is, uh, uh based on the data. So the first th uh, the things I I thought is uh contain four part of the uh, utilities. The first one is to find data, because if you do the research, you will know when we want to do some uh, comparative uh, genome analysis. The first thing is you, you have to make sure uh, for, for, the, uh, for your study family, how many uh, genome data uh, can I find published. And for this data, it should have the annotation information, right? So we, it will take many time to obtain the data throughout different websites or database. And to find the data is the AI can do at first, and then it will help you to manage the data and then to analyze this data and find to plot the data. Because for the area scientist, uh, the way uh, the work for a scientist is to uh, to pro propose uh, uh, ideas and then use the tools to uh, to find the results and to find new findings. So if we shorten or if we provide the convenient tools for them, it will uh, it will facilitate the findings. 
So in conclusions, uh, the things I talk uh, beyond can be uh, went into this several point. The first one is the comparing of occurs on staffs uh, with similarity but difference in some respects. And then the, compre uh, the comparative genome analysis uh, was a way to connect the, the difference between the uh, molecular traits and also the morphological uh, traits. And the things we can do is at uh, first we we can reconstruct the phylogenetic trees and based on some papers and some history uh, events, so we, uh, we, we build a biogeographic uh, stories and then we do the synthetic uh, analysis, whole genome duplication estimations, and also to do some work uh, on the gene family evolution on the uh, on the genes we focus on, and also to analyze if they uh, indeed have the function on the on the given tissues or the code process and their evolutions. And then now the CNGBDBs are preparing the genome portals in the special diversification levels. And then the CNGBs are also preparing the AI for science tools to help match and analyze the data. So, so today my sharing is close. So if you have any uh, further information, you can uh, send an email to me or or to the Winston or Raymond. That that is okay. So it's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So um, so, anyone have some questions? Uh, we can discuss now. I think somebody wanted the research paper about the sense pathways. If you could paste the link to that in the Discord or somebody else could. Yeah. You can do that later. Any more questions? Okay. Oh, you've got it. No. Yeah, so uh, I guess my question is, you mentioned at the end, because this is something I have done a little bit of uh, curating information for genomic data sets for many species. And in my experience, it's quite hard to find all the sources. So yes, you say you would like to use AI. I would be very happy if we could use AI to find the resources. But I think at least initially, we will probably need, you know, whatever yeah. the AI tells us that this is all data for this species from this source. A human being will still have to look at it all and say, yes, this is actually from the species. Because I don't think, I mean, I know scientific databases are supposed to be organized, but it's I still find it hard as a human. So I don't know how well an AI will do. Yes, it's, uh, it's indeed a complex, uh, complicated things. And we also think a lot because um, this work for, for hum human is also difficult. So when we want to, uh, to find the first things we, we have to find the data correctly, right? So for, for the database uh, areas. So the first thing for us is to do the data labels. Yeah, we have to label the data and uh, tell the AI, oh, what is this fast uh, from, from? It's from which specials and this special is within which genus or families and yep. this data, what this data can be do, and if this, uh, whether this data has the annotation information or something like that, this is a uh, quite new things. But uh, we think the things if we we can uh, use the AI to do something, it will indeed make sense. Yeah, but there are still many ways we we have to go. <laughs> okay, so so. If anyone have further questions, uh, can type on the uh, on the not uh, Someone have someone Okay, of course, of course, of course. Thank you. And the I have mentioned some uh, some examples and also some softwares. I uh, and I will send the uh, send the link of the. Uh, of the paper on the yeah okay cool um i think somebody is just typing something just saying thank you and great talk okay so vincent 
Do you want to say something to finish this session? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, CJ. Yeah, thank you, CJ. Please, you can. Thank you, thank you. Have an ending talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay, and everyone who joined uh, this seminar today. And I hope that in the future we still have a also have another opportunity to share the more words and we um, we uh, have done in National Gym Bank. And I hope that everyone can get access to CNGBDB and also the, the GOAT and bring more comments or objections for us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs>